debt. It can feel like a never-ending cycle of past due bills, high interest rates, and even collection calls. You want a way out, but most companies only deal with certain kinds of debt or offer quick fixes and even dangerous solutions that can destroy your credit and put you right back where you started. At Family Credit Management, we do things differently. First, we'll review your credit report to access who and what you owe. Then, we'll create a repayment plan that's in budget, lowers interest, and eliminates fees. We'll give you a roadmap out of debt once and for all by consolidating all your unsecured debt from all your creditors in our debt management program. You pay us once a month and we work with your creditors to take care of the rest. For over 20 years, we've been helping clients get back on track to financial independence. Now it's your turn. Get your free quote today. Hey, good evening. We are back again for another episode here. This is our final episode of the season though, so we hope you guys have a lot of questions or um, you give us a call, let us know how things are going for you. If you've got any questions dealing with your debt, finances, dealing with any types of issues related to your finances, feel free to give us a call 312-738-1060. We're here for the next 25 minutes or so. And then if you do not get the opportunity to call in let's, or you don't like being on air, I still want you to get the help that you need. So reach out to a counselor at Family Credit at 800-994-3328. Again, 800-994-3328. You can also go online and chat with a counselor directly by using the website familycredit.org. Now, keep that as a resource because I want you to be able to find the help that you need and it is out there. And the great thing about the counselors are that they're on standby to answer all of your questions. So we always talk about debt, finances, and um, answer any of those questions that you have. And so today we're going to do a recap of all of that. But first I wanted to touch just a little bit because right now it's summer and we know that the kids are out. And they are, um, you know, thinking about, hopefully they're thinking about their finances or you're thinking about things because guess what? Kids are expensive. We've got kids that are heading to college. We've got, guess what? Those that are just experiencing the real world. And, and many of you have seen this and you might think independence when you see this student driver sign, but guess what? There are so many things that come along with this that we haven't even thought about or even taken into account. Guess what? Student driver sign means what? First off, we know it means car insurance. Yes, we need to look at our budget. We need to think about those debts and bills that we have to pay. And there's a lot of responsibility that comes along with it. But guess what? We're not even talking about just with the auto. Kids might want to get a new car, yes. But guess what? We also need to think about finances as a whole. Think about what those kids actually think about finances and try and help steer them, keep them on track because we don't want them to bleed your pockets. And I know you don't want that either. So we've got some things that we can do looking at some budgeting ideas, some tips, some things that uh, Family Credit has to offer. Want you before we get really into things check out that website familycredit.org because that is where you will find the tips and tools that we are going to go over right now and i wanted to make you aware of that because family credit can give them to you for free all you need to do is reach out tell the counselor hey i saw um some financial literacy i saw some books on the on the show and i wanted to request them because the counselors can send those out to you first thing Let's think about the children that are out right now, the little kids, um, grade schoolers, middle schoolers, even younger than that, that are thinking about their finances. And I've got a great tool, which I'll just briefly highlight there for you. Check that out. Catherine and Elizabeth go shopping. Let's see if we can zoom out just a little bit on that. Catherine and Elizabeth go shopping. And you may say, okay, what's the importance of a book? Look, 
when you're talking to your kids about finances, a lot of times you don't know where to start. And a lot of times kids think that money is free. They think you always have it. They think you're an ATM and they want to come to you for money. But we need to teach them responsibly that it's not always like that. So we want to start instilling those um, values into our children, having them be able to come and talk to us about where money comes from, how it's not really free, and how they actually need to think about ways that even at their age they can contribute and have money for the things that they want. This book here, great reference for that. So Catherine and Elizabeth go shopping. I know you guys have heard about it on this show a few weeks ago even, where it gives just a fun little story, some great, great tidbits on making choices about what you're going to spend your money on and it's very colorful very very up to date and it's something that the kids can read along with and enjoy you can have this actually for your summer reading and it's available for free but it gives a great story backstory on how to get that conversation out there and to get kids talking about money and what they can actually do we want to make sure that they know that no matter how old they are, sometime in life there's an opportunity cost for every decision we make. And if you spend your money on one thing, you are giving up money for something else. So we need to talk to them about wants versus needs. What's important? The things that you need or something that you want you can live without. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Looks like we've got our first caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Yeah, I was told to take out a home equity loan to pay off my credit card debt. I was just wanting to get your thoughts on that. So, a great way for you to pay off debt, um, you do need to look at your options. You may be thinking about a home equity loan, but it's great for you to sit down and look at all of your options for paying off your debt. Now, home equity loans, a lot of times, they, depending on how you do it, if um, there's a couple of different ways to do it. If you are thinking about pulling out equity in your home, a lot of times it does come with a smaller payment than what you are typically paying on your debt now. So you want to look at the budget, see how much you're actually paying out. But then you also want to think about, am I okay with securing this unsecured debt with my home? Because guess what? Now you're saying that you're adding that debt into whatever your home loan is. You're going to be paying extra on that each month. Yes, your debt is gone. And that's something you want to think about. It might work in your favor. But also, you also think about, are you planning to use those credit cards again? Are you planning to use that debt again? With you replacing that, is the payment actually lower? Now that you're, you're stretching the payment, it might seem like a smaller payment, but you're stretching it over another 15, 20, 30 years. Is that something you want to do? So you want to weigh those options. Look at the interest rate that you're paying on your credit cards now. Look at what you'll be paying on that home equity loan. And look at if you are getting a home equity loan or a line of credit. Two other things that you want to think about. What I recommend is if you have a lot of debt, you need to know where you stand. Compile it. Go through everything. Write it down. Write down all of your credit card balances. Write down your loan balances. Um, you've got collection agencies, medical bills. Write all of those down and see if you can comfortably afford that. Also look at what you're paying out each and every single month. Think about your credit situation too. And then you may even want to talk to a counselor about which option would work for you because it's a lot to think about. There are so many options out there and you want to make the one that's best for your decision. Do I do a home equity loan? Do I look at debt consolidation? Do I look at a home, um, just um, a unsecured loan? So those are some things you want to think about. Basically, am I willing to risk my home for these credit cards? So, something you want to think about, and sometimes if you know that you have the equity in your home, let's say your home is paid off, then that might not be such a big risk after all. So think about all of your options. And you want to always make sure that you're putting your money to work for you. Again, talk to a counselor, look at your debt, and see what, situ what works best for your situation. So we were talking a little bit about children and finances, of course. We're headed towards uh, just a brief overview of everything that we've done over the past few weeks on the show. So we've talked about kids and finances, opening up their eyes, making sure that they know the importance and the value of money. That's the important thing. Get that conversation going and you can start that with this book, 
family credit, feel free to reach out to them and get a copy for free. Next thing you want to think about, okay, now you've got your high schoolers, you've got um, maybe your, your teenagers that are just getting into the job market and they are thinking, okay, now that I'm making money, I can go spend it, right? Whatever I've got, whatever I made, I'm going to go to the mall, I'm going to, you know, do Xbox, whatever, download some games, buy some games. And a lot of times we don't get them to thinking about their future either. So we want to make sure that we're doing a better job of thinking about what they actually need to do with their money and how to make it work for them at the young age that they are now. But first we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, hi. Is it a good idea to add my husband as an authorized user on my credit card to help him increase his credit score? So what you're talking about is actually doing piggybacking and a lot of people will do that hoping that it will improve their credit. So it really depends on how, your, how his credit looks right now. And you do want to think about that. If his, you wanna, is his score low because he just doesn't have any credit? Or is his score low because he's got a lot of bad collections or derogatory marks on his credit? So you want to take a holistic look at what's going on on the report. Yes, adding someone to your account could possibly improve things for them. And a lot of times it's a quick way to do that. But you also need to think about what happens if something goes wrong on your end too. Are you always going to be able to pay the credit card or uh, make that payment each and every single month? Will he be able to use the card? Think about that too. What's his responsibility to the card? So a lot of people do add others as authorized users, but you can also remove them um, as an authorized user as well. And another thing that I want you to think about, this just changed a few months ago. So even if you add someone to your card as an authorized user, it might not impact their credit at all because guess what? They're not going to report it to the credit bureau. In order for them to report an authorized user to the credit bureau, guess what needs to happen? That creditor needs to have that person's date of birth and social security number in order to report it to the credit bureau. If they don't ask you for that, if you just call and say, hey, I want to add my husband on my account, and they're like, okay, what's his name? We'll send you out another card. Then it's not being reported to the credit bureau, and it doesn't matter anyway. They need to be sure um, that they take down his information so that they can report it to the credit bureau. And if you don't ask about that, a lot of times you don't know. So I want to make sure that you do ask the right questions and get the information that you need because you could be doing all of that, adding them to the card, and it not even affect one way or the other. Also, whatever card you're thinking about, make sure they report to the credit bureau anyway. Make sure that that account is always in good standing and always on the credit limit. So whether you should add him or not, that's a conversation that you two do need to have. And also realize that there are other options, other alternatives out there to help them get to where they need to be, especially with rebuilding your credit. Personal Finance Made Easy, another great guide that you can get from Family Credit and the counselors have on standby. They are able to send it to you. Just want to take a quick look at this. Give some really great tips on how to improve your credit, how to make work for you, and those things that we just even talked about as far as um, whether you should contact your creditors or adding someone to your account. All the details and information inside this book. It's a great book. It talks about investing, savings and investing, big section, joint accounts, and co-signing loans. So these are some things that you can get more information on. Remember, it's not your responsibility to take on another's debt, but what can you do to help um, your own credit situation? So there's a lot of great tips here that you can use with trying to make things better for you, especially with your credit. So what are some of those things that I wanted to share with you? This book, of course, has a lot of great tips in it. Personal Finance Made Easy is available for free from Family Credit. Just want to go over a couple of these things here. Some quick money don'ts that we don't even think about. Again, we're trying to just open your mind and have you look at some things, some things that people even take for granted. Quick list of money don'ts. So it says don't help your children or your parents with too much debt. Don't take out a home equity on your house 
or a loan for 30 years. Don't carry credit card debt. Don't take on payday loans. So there are some tips and things that you can do instead of going through those things. And they're all available right here in this great guide, Personal Finance Made Easy. So I want you to call Family Credit and get that going. Um, looks like we've got another caller. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, I've heard a little about the debt snowball method um, for paying back your accounts. Can you explain what that is? Okay. And I actually had a few people that actually use this, and some even talked about it. I talked to someone yesterday who found it very, very effective. And our caller just introduced the snowball method for paying off debt. Now, when you think about it, if you make your minimum payments on your credit cards, on your um, debt, any types of bills that you're getting, your car notes, all those types of things, um, it will take you forever to pay off those debts. Just making the minimum payments on your credit cards will take you about 30 years to pay off that debt at the balance that it is right now. And that's just with making the minimum. So with the snowball effect, what you do is you take a look at your budget. You take a look at what you are paying out each and every single month. And you set up to make sure that you know and you're paying the minimums on each and every one of your credit cards. But then also what you want to do is see how much can I comfortably afford in addition to what I'm paying now to pay towards my debt. Now for some people they can say, okay, I can afford $10 more. Then some people, some other people can afford a little bit more. Maybe there's an extra $50 that you have that you can pay towards your debts each and every single month. So with the snowball method, you make your minimum payments just like you've always done on your credit cards, whatever bills that you have. But you take this extra amount, we'll use $50, you take this extra $50 and you will pay that towards the creditor with the highest interest rate or the, lower, the lowest balance. Either one you pick, it will take you the same amount of time to pay off that debt as long as you're not adding to the debt. So if you pick the creditor with the smallest balance, you put that, um, pay their minimum payment, which might be $20, you take that extra $50, so now you're paying them $70 each and every single month until you get that paid off. Once that debt is paid in full, you leave that account open. You do not use it, leave the balance at zero, but you take the money that you're paying on that account and you take that $70 and now you apply that with the minimum payment on the next account and you use that to get those debts paid off. That'll pay you off in three to five years guaranteed as long as you do it right and could do it in a quicker time frame than that. So it's all up to you and what your budget can comfortably afford. But you can reach out to a counselor and get some more information on the snowball effect as well. And it is also in this guide that we've been talking about, Personal Finance Made Easy. You'll find it in here too. So if you've got questions on it, feel free to get your guide. Looks like we've got another caller. Hey, welcome to the show. Oh, hello. Um, I was interested in finding out my credit score. Uh, what is the best way to request a copy of my credit reports to see that? Well, the best thing that you can do is go to annualcreditreport.com to get your free credit report and to get access to your score. Now, I recommend that because that's the only place where you will find all three bureaus one place and you can get access to it. There's a lot of different other tools that are out there. There's free credit profile. There's all these other websites. Credit card companies are offering your score. and giving you access to your report, but sometimes you've got to be careful about those um, that you see out there. Sometimes they will charge you a huge fee for that, or they may say, we'll give you the report for free, but all you need to do is sign up for our credit monitoring service of $39.99 a month, and as long as you do that, you know, you have the option to counsel within seven days, but it's going to be $40 a month. We'll monitor your credit. You get your credit report. You don't really need all that. You just need to go to annualcreditreport.com, pull down their report, look up your score, and um, you can monitor it because you're getting access to one bureau. You're getting access to all three bureaus three times a year. So you can spread that out. You get your um, Experian report, one, let's say the first quarter, then you do your TransUnion, then you do your Experian, and you switch it out throughout the year so that every four months or so you're monitoring your report, you know what's on it. And the reason why I do recommend doing it that way because you always want to know that you can get credit. And the last thing you want to do is apply for credit, go in and be turned down. So monitoring your credit is very important. 
Another thing that there are tools out there that will allow you to actually monitor your credit as well. So after you do annualcreditreport.com, there are other tools out there that will offer to monitor it for free. But you have to watch out for those too because you need to keep in mind that the information that they give you is not always up to date. So I hear a lot of people talk about Credit Karma, Credit Sesame, and some other tools that are out there. And yes, they do help you. They do help you know what's on your credit report and your score, but that they are not the credit bureaus. And that's the only problem with that. They give you a good idea, but it's not coming directly from the bureaus. So you can't necessarily say that that information given is the your full score and what's on your report right now. Think about it. They're not the Bureau, so it's going to take them some time to get that information. They have to reach out to TransUnion, to Equifax and Experian, get the information from them, pull it back into their, their systems, and make it readily available for you. So sometimes you might see that, yeah, my credit karma says that my score is this, but when someone else pulled it, it shows as this. So you have to take it for what it is. Use it as a tool to help you monitor, but if you want the real score, go directly to the source, which is the credit bureaus directly, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian, and they all have websites too, where even if you forget annualcreditreport.com, you can go to their um, websites directly and log in and get your report and your score. Another um, resource that you can use, myfico.com, because that's where the FICO score actually came from, and you can get your FICO score directly from them as well. Each bureau has their own model of how they use the score, which score that they use, and so it's always best, like I said, to get it directly from the source. If you've got problems though with that and you can't find it, you're not sure if the report is real or if it's the right thing, you're looking at the right thing, you don't understand the information on it, always reach out to a counselor because they can help you they can help you pull the report they can help go over the report with you and give you some much needed guidance and information on dealing with your creditors contacting creditors and um, if you've got problems with them they're there to help you that's why I said use them as a resource again that information is available and it's available directly with the counselors another thing that is out there another tool we want to talk about really really quickly the annual spending plan, your My Spending Plan with Family Credit, this great guide that you should be doing as at least once a year, but probably going over it, you know, more than that. So it's a very, 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 very cool guide for setting up your goals. And honestly, what's the purpose of it? To help you set up your budget. So there's a place for you to track your expenses, for you to determine what your income is. A lot of us, we can't make it on our budgets because we don't even know what we are bringing in. So how do you determine what your income is? Then think about it. How do you free up some extra cash? There's so many different spending leaks and ways that we spend money not even knowing it. And we're left wondering, where did our money go in the course of a month? So think about that. Look at tracking your expenses, knowing who you owe. That's really important. Make sure you keep record of your balances, your payments, and making sure that you can actually even afford the payment each and every single month. Because if you can't, then you do need to get help. This is a great guide, even to introduce to kids that are going out in the world, planning for the future, teaching them about retirement, teaching them the importance of saving money. Why do you need to save money? Because guess what? You're not always going to have all the money that they need. And going over how your money could possibly grow by saving it. This is a great guide. I do recommend it. And if you need some help, you can contact a counselor again. Get this information. They will send it to you. They'll mail it to you. And guess what? You can download it on the Family Credit website. So it's available there too. So you can print it off, write in it, and do what you need to do to get your budget together. We've talked a lot about credit. We've talked about your budget, finances. Also available at Family Credit, we've got these great little credit card holders, which will help you think about your debt and how to get it and keep it together. I want you to feel empowered and be able to take care of your finances. If you've got questions about credit, there's so many different scams out there, so many people that are promising that they could, um, you know, repair your credit. Credit repair is not even legal here in Illinois, so you want to do what you can. Get the knowledge that you can from the right people to help you take control of your situation because it's all about you doing it yourself. And watch out for those people that are trying to make you pay for it. So if you can get the right guidance and help and someone that's going to walk with you through it and get yourself debt free, 
that's what you need to do. Take those steps for that. Contact a counselor, family credit, 800-994-3328. Go over your finances and your credit report, anything like that. Any other questions that you may have, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Take care.